Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, welcome if you're new, I'm Stacy, and today we are going to open up and swatch this little Artist Loft watercolor palette that I got for Christmas. Now the kit came, um, it's a, uh, the Michael's Craft Store brand, and it came packaged with this so if you want to know what it looks like, it is the 24 color set, uh, watercolor paint starter set by Artist Law. So it comes with the palette, a nice, a really nice actually, um, block of paper, which is amazing because a block of paper means, if you don't know, there's a little tiny section here that is not glued down, the rest is glued all the way around. You can stick a uh, uh, palette knife or something in there to scrape around and get your paper off the block. This is nice because you can decorate the cover yourself if you want to, which is super fun. And then it came with a liner, which we don't know what brand it is, but is a 0 .5, which is my go-to size, 0.05. And then it came with a watercolor brush. I don't normally use these. They're not my they're not my thing really, but I've been trying to get used to them because I am going to be going out and about this year when the weather isn't below tolerable as far as temperature is concerned. And um oh, and we're gonna be painting and drawing from life. So let's open up our little palette. This is super cute super cute. I love the top that it's got watercolor, a little bit of art on it. And when we open it up, oh, okay. Oh, it comes with a little swatch card, which I forgot about. Clearly I used the pen on here. Um, I did inspect this a little bit when I first got it and it comes with a little paintbrush. Let's, ooh, that's soft. Synthetic kind of has a lot of snap. It's not technically a watercolor brush, but I prefer a brush with a little bit of snap. So that's nice. I, I forgot about that. And this little smooth tray right here is nice. So we could swatch on here, I guess. And these are, um, what, what do they call it, extruded? So they're two long pieces of paint and they cut them and then put them in here. And they seem to be, yeah, they're glued in there pretty good. Now is it glue? They might be glued in or just on the bottom wet and then tacked in. But there's a nice big, here let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, nice big mixing space. Um, a place for more than one brush if you want. You can put your favorite your favorite watercolor brush in there. I don't think this guy will fit in there. Um, but n lots of nice mixing space. I tend to work this direction when I'm working paint, mix, paper, because I'm right-handed. But yeah, this is this is cute. All right, let's get into swatching the colors. Scooch that up. Up, up, up. Oops. <laughs> I still have out my core watercolor palettes. Um, this is just a liner. It's a black fine liner. You can get really nice fine lines with it. It seems to be a decent pen. Um, let's go ahead and grab some water. And I imagine if I let it dry all the way, it would be waterproof, so that's cool. Okay, let's just put this this direction, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six or not, we'll go this way. We'll go four and four. All right, the white. Now, normally, I would. Oh, that's actually working up really nice. S um, spritz the paint to kind of get it going. But. In the interest of seeing how they work, how quickly they re-wet, um, I'm not going to do that. That's actually re-wetting pretty nicely. 
I'll do a little little swatches. I'm not seeing color. Oh, here we go. Color names on the back of this. So we got white, lemon yellow. This is our lemon yellow, which is actually very nice. We're going to go ahead and fold this back and we'll do a little little side by side situation. How about that? Let's scoot this guy over so that we can see everything in frame. I have way too much stuff on the table again. Again, I was, um, this was a spur of the moment decision to go ahead and get this video done. There we go. Now we can do it. Let's set these guys up here. So I'm not going to swatch the white on here, but there's our, our lemon yellow. Just to see how it dries. This is watercolor paper, by the way. Um, does not say whether or not this is 140 pound. I would imagine usually it's 90 or 140 pound watercolor paper. This feels like 140. These are re-wetting like really well. Really, really well. Oh, that's pretty. That looks like gamboge. They're calling it medium yellow. And they don't have like numbers, the, the colored numbers on there. They just have the names that they gave the paint. And this one. Ooh, son of a mother. Okay. Is their or earth yellow. Oh, I forgot to put it on the big page. Earth yellow, which kind of reminds me of ochre. Only a little more bright, maybe, on the page. There we go. We'll leave a little room for the, the other one. We'll get in here and put it on the page. Just grab a little more water here. Now these re wet really nice. So far I'm a little I'm more than a little impressed. I like this color a lot. Like all the yellows are really nice for me. I haven't um ever run across a set where the yellows are really nice right out of the gate. I usually have to change one of them out. And this one is their orange. Nice bright orange. Orange. Oh. Oh, I missed the white. That's why. That's going to throw me off. We're going to go ahead and put the white right there. And then the red, right? Oh, they're calling it Pon Q. Pon. P O N C E A U. Which is more of an orange red, probably. Yeah, a nice bright Christmas red. We got a little dollop of water right there. We'll just move it up. That is a vibrant orange red. Woo! Vibrant. Look at that. So pretty. I hope they don't dry chalky. These are going to be, this is going to be a really nice set if they don't dry chalky. I don't usually buy student grade paint because I just don't want to waste my money on paint that's not going to make me feel happy when I'm done with doing a piece. And some of the some of the student grade paints have lots of filler and they end up drying pretty chalky. They have a little chalky film over them. And I don't know that that's something you can fix cuz it's um mixed into the paint. That one is their Oriental red, and this one is their deep red. Oh, I like that. Reminds me of magenta, the Quinn magentas, a little bit. Close, close, close. 
that's pretty. And then, oh, right? So we got, that was eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. That was their deep red. So this one is rose. Ooh, so a little um, opera rose kind of feeling. That's pretty. Very pink color. Those don't tend to be very light fast, and I can't imagine this set is terribly light fast. But it, I mean, it could be good for practice and taking out and about with you. That's a really pretty color. Look at that pink you can get. Oof, love it. Be good for flowers, right? Rose, and then this is their purple violet. Purposely not going to touch that. Ooh, this is very reminiscent of dioxazine purple. Let's see how dark it can get. Oh yeah, see? It can get nice and dark. Almost black if you layer it up. Yeah, that's pretty. Or they get this gorgeous violet color. Okay, and this one, which looks black, is their pale violet. It looks almost the same as this one. Let's have a little water and put it right next to this one. Okay, so it's a little, it's not quite the same. This is their pale violet, and this is their purple violet, so this is their more subdued. But it, look that, you can get some nice dark, almost black color. You can bleed out into, this seems to move around really nice on the page too like core colors, which I've been using for the last few paintings. <coughs> this one, oops, let's clean that brush a little better than that, is their sky blue. Ooh, very cerulean. That's pretty. Yeah, that's very pretty. This paper seems to be really nice too so far. I like how the paint's going down. Grab a little water. Drop that in there. Okay, clean that pretty good. That was that one. We're gonna grab this guy, which is sea blue. Ooh, there's a Prussian blue in here. Can't wait to get to that one. Okay, so sea blue. Oh, that's really pretty. Wow. Look at that. This is a gorgeous mix of colors. And I like having a lot of colors available to me. I know some people prefer to mix their colors, and I do mix my own colors. It, they tend to be more interesting. But look at that. Oof. Dreamy. Dreamy, dreamy. I feel like I should put something under this so that it's not glaring so much. Of course, it's going to run back that way if I do that. There we go. Well, it's not glaring so much. Okay. So now we're moving on to this one which is their Prussian Blue. I really like Prussian Blue. It speaks to me. It's kind of close to indigo, and I just love it. A little more water. And there's their Prussian, which also can get very dark. <coughs> and to make those nighttime skies, you can mix your purple and your Prussian with just a touch of gray or black. 
and it um, gives you a really beautiful night sky color. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I like that. I'm digging it. Then this is their ultramarine. And ultramarine is um, a favorite, a must have for any palette, in my opinion. It's good for skies, it's good for water. I tend to mix my ultramarine with one of my other blues, this one and this one together, to make um, sea colors. If you don't want a granulating sky, you use that kind of color. If you want a granulating sky, you can use ultramarine. Generally, ultramarine's a, a naturally granulating color as well. Look at that, so pretty. Got little bubbles in it. So pretty. Look at that. Gorge. Gorgeous. It is a little viscous. The, this color is a little um, gel like. See how it's not smoothing out like these did? Can add a little more water, I guess. Let's see how that does. That doesn't move on the paper the same way. That's alright though, you can make it work. Just have to figure it out. Um, let's see. And then we are on to our greens. This is their yellow green. That's pretty. I would use this in, in florals with my my darker greens. Mixing with my blues to get those blue greens. Mixing with even more yellows to get even brighter yellows. This looks like Viridian. I don't like Viridian. Medium green. I, it's a personal preference, very much so. Um, Viridian just is not a color that I would choose to buy and put in my palette on purpose. This is a very beautiful color. It's just not one of my go-tos. It look, feels very... I don't know, color crayon fake to me. I don't know why. Moving along, this is our deep green, it says. Yeah, it says deep green. Maybe this is the one that reminds me of Viridian. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let's get some water on that. There we go. Does it lift off the page? Oh, pretty well. Now let's get back in here and swatch this color. That's this one. There we go. Yeah, almost missed it. Then we'll get in here and do this one. This one's not too bad, I guess. I would definitely mix it with a... Well, I really want to put it there, but I'm going to go ahead and keep, keep, keep it on. Hmm. That's pretty. I would mix it with other things, though. This is my kind of color right here. This more olive green, army green. This is the green I like to use. I, these have their place in florals, don't get me wrong. But I tend to mix this with that, or this with uh, blues and yellows, because it feels more earthy to me. Yeah. That more sap green color. And they're calling this one, is their um, medium, their deep green, and this one is their tree green. Which makes sense. It does look like trees. Oh, it looks granulating. Nice. I do love a granulating color. 
And then we have this one here, which they are calling Burnt Ochre. Well, aside from Ultramarine and possibly Sky Blue and Lemon Yellow, these their color names are not very true to traditional artistic um, names for, for professional names for watercolors. I like that. Yeah, that's nice. There we go. I'll put that one right there. Very pretty. I carried away up here in the middle with the size of my swatches. And then this one they are calling so that's burnt ochre, and this one they're calling burnt umber. Hmm. I don't use burnt umber a lot, so I mean I could. I like the way the paint's going down on this paper. I, li I think I really like the texture of this paper. I do like Artist Loft watercolor paper though, it, just in general. <clears throat> it's a really nice budget watercolor paper. I've never had any problems with it. Alright, let's do sepia, which looks black in here, but it's more of a a deep dark brown. Yeah. That kind of like this is a deep dark green. This is that deeper, more earthy brown. Which I oddly enough never go to. I I I have the color, I just don't use it very often and I don't put it in a palette by choice. Maybe I should try, like practice. We'll put a, put it right here. Kind of around that one. It's nice, right? And then we have Payne's Gray and then Black. Now Payne's Gray I find to be very useful. To mix with like dioxazine. Oh, and this is a nice blue based Payne's Gray. Yeah, I would use this one. This one's nice. Let's. Here, I'll show you how to take this off of here real quick. Where's my palette knife at? Where'd you go, little buddy? I guess I could use this. It probably will work. Palette knife, butter knife, whatever you got. Just tuck it in there between the paper, the papers, and run it flat and along the edge and away. That's releasing really nicely. It's not glued so much that it doesn't come off nicely. So yeah, that's nice. Okay, cool. All right, and we'll go ahead and swatch our pans gray right up here. See, that's a beautiful gray. Look at that. These re-wet really nicely. I'm, I'm impressed. I wasn't expecting them to be nice. Pleasantly surprised. Look at that. I dig it. And then here's our noir or black. I don't often use a straight black, but if I do, I always mix it with another color because it makes it more interesting. You can get some nice, this is a nice black. Get that deep dark black <clears throat> down to that chalky black, down to a nice pale soft gray. Yeah, I dig that. How light will this one go? I love this one. Let's see if we take our. Let's see. And that one's ultramarine. This one is the. Prussian and black and mix them together 
This black is yellow leaning. I saw some greens pop out of there. Let's see. See what it does to that black? That undertone of green blue. Isn't that pretty? Check that out. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. This little brush doesn't hold very much water. Isn't that pretty? I dig it. And that black, the, those two colors together, this black must be granulating, it is. And so is this. Ah. Oh, I might have to get some tubes of Artist Loft. Um. Paints gray and black because I love a granulating color. Look at that. And this one's kind of blue leaning, so we can put some. Let's put some cerulean in there. See, and it just makes a beautiful blue color. Or, or. Now, I tend to mix all three together for a nighttime nebulous kind of sky. This is our gray. That's our, our paint's gray. And I'm going to mix it with a violet. This is the pale violet. Got a nice, nice pile of violet. Grab a nice swatch of that. Look at that dark color. Now, for reference, this one is the violet right here. And drop in that Payne's Gray, and it makes a beautiful dark, dark violet color. And you can get it purple gray instead of a, you know, blue gray or green gray. And because these look like they're leaning more green, when you put a blue in, they're going to turn more green. I wonder, are you dry? I'm going to flip this over. I, I really like color mixing. It's one of my favorite, like, all-time things to do. To experiment. I'm going to go in with this red right here. Drop that right there. Mix our red and gray together. Ooh. Look at that color. That's beautiful. Check it out. Payne's Gray. Now every Payne's Gray is going to be different. It's it's going to be a little leaning one way or another. So look at the pigment numbers on the tube and see if it's something that you want to play with. Um, this one will make some really beautiful purples it looks like. We've got our pinky rose color. Grab some of our gray. Plop that in. Mix that up. Pull that out. Look at that. Oh yeah, digging it. Digging it. And see, it's granulating. You can see the black and red pigment settling and separating a little bit. And we'll be able to tell more once it's dried completely. But yeah. Awesome. And <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. I'm not seeing any chalky residue at all. And I forgot to put a black line for opacity. We could do that right now though if you want if you want. 
We could run a black line and... Okay, I put a black line with a Sharpie. Just let that dry for a second. And then we can go ahead... Oh, I forgot I had paint on the back of this. Whoopsie. That's okay. It'll clean up. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> oh, the weird girl who thinks paint on her table is pretty. There we go. We'll just put that there. Okay. Now let's use the cleaner water there. Let's grab our white. See how opaque, because if the white it goes down nicely, you can use the white to make any of these nice and opaque and um, more gouache like. Oh, yeah, look at that. Nice. That's what we're gonna, we'll see how it dries. It's looking like promising to be an opaque color, and then just a little. And you. Yeah. And this is a quick process. It doesn't need to be involved. It's basically glazing a layer over the previous layer. You don't want to fuss too much because you'll lift that layer that's underneath. You just want a quick swipe like that. My water cup's in my way now. <coughs> There we go. <sighs> I'm tired, you guys. This is getting up at four in the mornings for the birds, I tell you what. Not used to it at all. I'm gonna go over this side. Oop. Yeah, this one's gonna <laughs> cover just it's gonna cover just fine. Maybe we'll lift a little bit of that up. I got it way too wet. Upside this brush holds quite a bit of water. This paint is very pigmented. Let's see how it dries. I mean, this is fun, right? I love swatching paints. It's a very pleasing activity. This is a very strong color as well, but very transparent at the same time, it looks like. I do love Prussian. And generally you would do this with a flat brush as well to get a nice little stroke of color. But we're just gonna stick with what we have in the hand. Did I miss one? One, two, three, four. This is, yeah, I did. I'm on this one. Clean that really well. There we go. Nice. I do love that color. These are, this is a really decent selection of colors. I'm very happy with it. When I saw the box, I was like, ugh, student grade watercolors. I don't know. I haven't used student grade watercolors since I started painting almost five years ago. Just as a rule, you know, to always be challenging myself to <coughs> a, use the best supplies I can get just because you want to use the best supplies you can get, right? I'll put a little that line. 
through there. Let it dry. Whoopsie. Splattered great paint all over myself. These are beautiful. Look at those. Ugh. Some dreamy colors going on. I want to plop water in these really bad. Let's see if they disperse because they're still wet. Let's see if it creates a nice bloom. Let's see what happens. Okay. gray and then our noir there we go I mean I'm really kind of super happy with the, the set is anybody else seeing any chalkiness maybe maybe with this color a little bit otherwise they're pretty they're pretty great they're pretty true and I mean, transparent and gorgeous, and the pigment quality, like that pigment load is really nice. You don't have to scrub and struggle to get gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Look at those mixes. Look at them. So nice. Um, I don't want to waste the block. Let's... Let's grab this card right here. Is this one? No, that's a fresh one. This one, I'm, I marked this one up, so we'll, we'll use this one for color mixing. Let's grab our yellow, this yellow. This cool, cool yellow. A nice blob. And then... Which red do I want to use? I don't really want to use the orange red, but more of a true red, right? And see, put water in between and just see how they mix. Need more yellow. That red is very strong. So if you had to mix or wanted to mix a different the orange, you can. And my water's a little dirty, so let's do ultramarine. The ultramarine you have to really kind of scrub out a bit. There we go. Push that into that red. See what kind of violet purple we can get. This one's a little... I'm not digging this ultramarine at all. Eggplant kind of color. And then if you grab this, this deeper red, mix it with ultramarine as well. That's better. So you don't have to have purple in your palette. You can get a decent purple. Let's try this blue. There's sky blue. With the red. Any more sky blue. It's, that red is strong. Kind of giving us a violet, more violet color. Yeah. Also pretty. Okay. 
Let's see what kind of greens we can get. This bright yellow with a little terrain. Oh, that's a nice green. I like that. And then we'll choose a more earthy yellow. We'll mix that one with ultramarine as well. It gives us our more olive color. I like that. Maybe grab this earthy yellow. I'm going to mix it with Prussian. Well, oh, is it the Prussian? Yeah, it is. There it is. And we get a more vibrant, more, more something along the lines between here and here. And once again, it'll depend on your the pigments that are making up your colors. If there's more than one, if it's not a um, single col pigment color, it'll lean a different way. There we go. There's our lovely yellow green. Very vibrant, pretty, do the same mix but with the other yellow, it gives us a very, even more like, there we go, yellow green color. That was purple. Got a little purple in there. So that's fun, right? Let's see what other orange we can get. Oh, did I do this one for an orange? I don't think I did. Yellow and just a touch of red. Yeah, a little bit more. Because it's a deep, earthy orange. And we put a little more yellow in it. Oh, yeah. So you just have to play with your ratios and see where you like it to lean. There we go. I like that. That's pretty. Okay. And then this one. Once again, I'll mix it with that same deep red. Gives you a much more red leaning orange. More of a yellow orange and instead of that deep earthy orange that I prefer. They're both beautiful colors though, right? Close, they're similar. It just is all about taste what you feel you like with your color mixing and creating your art. Um, I really, really enjoy um, the subtle granulation in some of these. This, I don't know, that dried pretty flat. My darling. didn't bloom so much as just rest on the page. <coughs> <coughs> oh, 
whoa, whoa. Yeah, I love these. This is, it's a great set. It is a great set, you guys. I'm, I'm happy with it. Got all these colors. Now we just need to make some paintings with them. I'm not sure how long this video is, but, um, the Artist Loft from Michael's, um, 24 set of watercolors, um, without doing an actual painting with them and just playing with the color mixing like I do with all my stuff, um, I would highly recommend, right? These are your colors. It's a nice set. It's not too red heavy. It's not too blue heavy. Um, some, a lot of sets like this tend to have way too many reds for me or way too many yellow, red, um, orange configurations and too many earth tones with all the reds, oranges, and then just a couple earth tones. You can make all the darks that you always, that you ever wanted to have. Um, and this is the colors on the back. If you're interested. Um, I don't know if you can buy this online. I don't believe Artist Loft is available outside of Michael's. I think it's their proprietary, proprietary brand of product. But yeah, I'm very happy with this set. Um, very happy. Let's clean up this yellow a little bit. Uh, I didn't even use our mixing space, which is nice. Paint's not beating up, which is also very nice. That's debris from the water. I need to clean my water containers. We could have mixed on here instead of on the paper. Silly, Stacy, silly. Grab some more yellow. Grab some more yellow. Yeah, look at that. That is a great orange. I need to clean this yellow when I get done playing with it. A nice, nice, more yellow than red mixture, and it'll give you this great orange color. Come here. Why am I having a hard time lifting this paper up? Look at that. So pretty. This brush leaves a lot to be desired. It doesn't hold enough paint. This paper is very absorbent too. There we go. Look at that. Gorgeous. And if you wanted it to be even more, you just keep adding yellow. You can add white as well. Let's try that. That white probably would smooth it out, right? It looks like it's smoothing that color out and softening it down. It's still really pretty. Look at the palette now. It's really pretty. <laughs> Violet. Let's see if I can mix my my night sky color that I like. I usually use indigo and um, a Payne's gray, <clears throat> any kind of Payne's gray color or variant thereof. Um, and I usually use Doxy purple, indigo, and Payne's gray. Payne's gray. And then we mix them all together. Mix, 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 mix. And it creates this really beautiful kind of nighttime color. Dusky. That dusky blue that you get when the, when the sun falls. And then it can be as dark as you need it to be. And sometimes I'll put more blue or, or or more gray. Like you can go even more more gray and get an even deeper, darker feel. That's one of my favorite nighttime colors to create. Look at that dark. 
You can go with a little more blue. Lend it to be a little more blue instead of purple, which is also very nice. Need more water. There we go. So, so pretty. And once again, you can layer it up and make it nice and dark. But yeah, there we go. This is more neutral tint, this is more purple, and this is more blue. And once again, just play with your, your ratios and your water, how much water you're using, so you can get a gradient sky if you want to. You know, that dark to light situation going on. Nice and dark at the top, coming down to where that sun has disappeared, where it'd be just hazy and light. And then maybe we've got some pine trees down here. I think my phone's telling me to go to bed. Something like that. Yeah, this is going to be fun painting. I'm digging it. I feel like because I have professional brands, I should give it to my daughter to play with and let her, because she's never used watercolor before. I feel like she'd have a lot of fun with it. Some people really don't like watercolor though. I don't understand that. But I, I get it because I don't really care for acrylic. I've tried and tried and tried to make myself really like acrylic. And I'm on the fence with gouache. Um, it tends to be more acrylic leaning than I want it to be. So I'm going to stop talking. This video is way too long. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want to see some action with this set, probably do it anyways. But let me know. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.